What a titanic day it's been. Um, I've gone through the crazy flow state today and was able to do some good stuff to the art and also some really good programming. Um, starting with the art, this is kind of how my day started. I was uh, working on the saturation values and just little things to, to make the art look a little bit better. And you can tell um, that this is from yesterday. Right, this is kind of like the see how green the background is. It's very saturated, the the ground on the it, well, the background and the ground. But uh, yeah, and here's with it a little bit less saturated. Right, things are a little bit uh, now easier on the eye. You're not as uh, the the ground really shouldn't be that saturated. But check out um, one of the things I was always wanting to do was add stairs and uh, just play around with the little different art pieces and things like that. And so instead of having the whole arena just sort of like curved based on um, based on how far you are from the center, it now actually has specific sections where, which are stairs. And you can, you can tell right here we have some stairs you can climb, right? This is a nice sloped section. And then it becomes flat once you're on top of the stairs. This is what I wanted for the arena for a long time, and man, it really makes it a lot more fun. I also added these two little... Uh, couple different places where you have these little tiny paths so if you were to get into a battle right here this would be you know you'd be totally blocked off or you could block someone off um, and then we've got some another specific set of stairs right here that goes up to these items in these corners that's the blink orb oh hey it even works uh, and then when I added this, this little art piece right here it's sort of like maze like thing floating in the air and there's also some one-way or some really tiny paths going from these items. I'm actually going to take this section right here, that where uh, the player is right here, that are that are stairs that are sort of like bending downward. And I think I'm going to make those uh, just flat right there in that that section. But anyways, these stairs come down to this middle section, and now we've got this also this art piece right here. This is kind of cool. But it, you can tell at certain angles it starts to look kind of funny. Oh, I just realized this. I don't have the rotate flag on this thing, so this uh, big cube thing in the middle is not actually rotating. But that doesn't matter. Um, I can make it rotate later and do some fun stuff to it. Really, the point of all this is that to make the arena feel cooler and also look a lot better. And, uh, yeah, this is all kind of like one day's worth of... Uh, effort and then to top it all off while I was while I was doing all this today I had this idea that gosh I could speed up the render system quite significantly especially when you rotate the camera um, in fact you can see I used to film videos like this and I would rotate the camera and it would really would be quite slow uh, because the frame rate just drops a lot because I'll show you why looking at profiles look at a profile from whoops this is a uh, this thing here instruments that's right this is a profile from earlier today actually the beginning of the day uh, where I I was like why why is it so slow when I rotate the camera check it out what happens every time you rotate the camera it has to it had or used to have to go and refresh every single model and inside the refresh model it would have to multiply all these colors this was taking three whole seconds out of ten seconds right here just to rotate just to apply colors but also rotating by a certain degree amount that's also a huge thing and then also just the general aspect of having to up refresh a model and refresh every single render components model every single time you rotate the camera that's just a lot of work to do so the idea was to cache every single one of the models at all their rotations so there's now in it'll cache up um uh, eight different compass directions. So we've got 0, 45, 90, 135, etc. All the 45 degree multiples get cached for every single model. So it, it incredibly speeds up the whole render system because it's already got that shit rotated. All it has to do is copy the rotated data instead of having to, to go and then like rotate every single voxel and apply colors to every single voxel. It's got It's got a cached copy of every... 45 degree rotation and also all of the colors that get requested and um, this is quite a large check-in here but I'll, I'll take a look let's take a look at this uh, this commit I'll take a look at some of the code I mean I affected every single a lot all, a lot of the data 
So almost every single one of these data things had something to change. Like there's no more global occlude, there's no more global color. It's just every single model is now can be occluded. So this is also a, a big speed up too, is that um, I don't have to remember inside the data for the render component to add this global occlude flag. It just, everything's already, already occluded. So, oh, these, this is just the data part. Uh, here we go, here's the code part. Um, let's go to some significant parts. Well, model, the model structure now has a rotate. Um, and these are, this is important here. The cache, the file name is now part of the config. So it simplifies the caching. And then when you get from the cache, you pass in um, your file name and you pass in whatever current rotation and color you want. And it will not only load it from the cache, it'll automatically load, uh, no, it won't automatically load from the cache a, a blank rotation and color. It will automatically load from the cache though if it has a, a variant of a color or a variant of the rotation. So it's kind of a sweet system now. Um, Let's see the relevant parts. This is kind of an optimization to load loading each voxel file. It actually has an original cache as well as its model cache. So the model cache is now basically by key. And um, here it is. Uh, the model cache is basically the key, the key. And the key of each uh, model is its file name, a colon, its rotation, a colon, and its color. Right. So everything in the model cache has that long key value for its key and then the model original cache is basically just the file name only so we can always go back into the original cache and find the find the file name that we can don't have to reload it every single time right um, and then let's see some more important parts uh, being able to tint voxels rotate voxels here's where that makes that model key using the file name rotation and color um, this is that's kind of the same code here. Basically, it's just loading of voxels. But this is this is it right here. This is kind of neat. So cache basically takes. Um, this is when you when you're loading a render component, it'll call a model cache, right? It sets up two colors. We always it always caches the white color. So that's basically an unchanged version of the model's colors. And then um, it also caches the current color you're passing in. And then it loops over all the 45 degree rotations and then loads all those and saves them using those spiffy new keys. And um, that's really all there is to this. This is um, this is automatically loading a color variant by um, just setting up the model config the same, exact same way except for having the new color and loading. So, and then another big thing is that it doesn't have to refresh all the models every time it rotates the camera because we've already got all those set up. I think that's really the, the important stuff. Yeah, this is, uh, well, it also, refresh model is kind of an important part too. Refresh model got greatly simplified. This is something that runs in the render system on every single tick for an entity that needs its model refreshed. So, um, the real big simplification here is we're cutting out all the rotation, cutting out all of the reprojection of voxels. This is also a huge time suck right there. And uh, only the only thing left is just to shift colors based on the hue shifts for that current model. We don't have to occlude the model either. That's already done. And we also do not have to apply colors to the model. All of those things were huge time sinks. So huge win here on this bit of code. And also a huge win on the art today. So feeling quite accomplished. Thanks for watching.